Hi, this is the CAD CAM Lessons channel. In this video, I will show you how to model this part in FreeCAD. Before we start, just a quick note, you'll find links to my FreeCAD courses in the description. It's also a great way to support the channel. Now, let's get started. Let's switch to FreeCAD and I will show you my approach to creating this part. FreeCAD should start with this start page. We very often create 3D models in FreeCAD by basing them on 2D sketches and we use the part design workspace for this. To create a new project in this module, click the parametric part button here. In this module, we create 3D models based on 2D sketches, and the 2D sketch is the foundation of building the 3D model. We will start with that. To create a sketch, click the Create Sketch button. Here we select the sketch plane. We can choose one of the basic planes of the coordinate system. Select the XY plane. Here, something you might notice is that we have been switched to the Sketcher module, where we have tools for creating 2D sketches. In my opinion, this is a big advantage of FreeCAD. When we need sketching commands, we are switched to the Sketcher module, and when we want to create 3D solids based on 2D sketches, we switch to the Part Design module. Thanks to this, we have a more organized menu, only the commands we can currently use are available. Here, we will start by creating a rectangle. We will create the rectangle by selecting the Center Rectangle command. This command works by defining the center point of the rectangle. In this case, choose the origin of the coordinate system as the center point. Notice that when you hover over this point, it becomes highlighted. Click the left mouse button and the center of the rectangle has been constrained to the origin point. Now we can define the rectangle's dimensions. Enter 200 millimeters as the length of this side, press tab, and enter 100 millimeters as the length of the other side. Regarding zooming in and out, we do this using the mouse wheel. Now based on this sketch, we will create a 3D solid. To do this, we close the sketch. Notice that we have returned to the part design module. Here, we will create a 3D solid based on this sketch by extruding the sketch to a specific value. We do this using the pad operation. Select this operation. Here we specify the height of the solid, enter 30 millimeters here. If you click the left mouse button outside this field, the view in the workspace will update. Click OK. In this way, we created such a simple solid. Regarding basic navigation in FreeCAD, rotating the mouse wheel zooms the view in and out. If you press the left and right mouse buttons, you can pan the part in the workspace. By pressing the mouse wheel, you can rotate the view. This navigation method results from the selected navigation style. Here, I have the Blender style selected as the navigation style. If you hover your cursor over this area, information about how this navigation style works will appear. Okay, we have this simple solid. It is just a regular rectangular block. Now let's move on to creating the next parts of this solid. We will create another operation. Now we will add fillets to the corners. To add fillets to the corners, hold down the control key and select the edges you want to round. We need to select these four edges here. Select them with the control key and now select the fillet operation. Enter 30 millimeters as the radius value here and press enter. That is how the fillets were created on this solid. Next, we will move on to creating holes in this solid. We will create the holes in such a way that the center points of the holes are constrained to the center points of the fillets. Regarding creating sketches, besides creating sketches on the basic planes of the coordinate system, we can also create sketches on the faces of the solid. We will create the next sketch on this face. Select this face and choose the Create Sketch command. Here I would like to draw four circles based on which I will create the holes. As I said earlier, I want the center points of these circles to be constrained to the center points of the fillets. Now if I select the circle drawing command, I don't have any characteristic geometry here to which I could constrain the center point of this circle. Therefore I click the right mouse button to cancel the circle drawing command and we will create reference geometry to which we can constrain the circle center points. We do this using the create external geometry command. Select this command and now click on the fillet edges. As you can see, the center point of this fillet appeared. We do this with the subsequent fillets. Simply hover over the edge, and when the edge is highlighted, click the left mouse button. In this way, we created reference geometry that we can use in this sketch based on the solid's edges. Now I click the right mouse button to cancel this command and select Draw Circle. 
Now when I hover over the fillet's center point and it is highlighted, I click the left mouse button to constrain the circle to this point. I enter 9mm as the circle diameter and press enter. Ok, we have the first circle created. Now I will draw the next circles in a similar way. I hover the cursor over the fillet center point, but this time I do not enter the circle diameter. I draw the subsequent circles. I intentionally do not specify the diameter of the remaining circles because all these circles will have the same diameter and we will use the equality constraint here which will link all the circles. To do this select all the circles, simply click the left mouse button on these circles. Regarding selecting geometry in the sketcher, we do it exactly this way. We simply click the left mouse button on the geometry we want to select, then select the equality constraint. If not all constraints are visible to you, simply expand this group of icons. And here we have the equality constraint. Select this constraint or simply press the E key on the keyboard. Now all diameters are equal. Notice that three circles changed color to green. Here, in the case of this circle, the automatic constraint linking the circle center to the fillet center point was not applied. Therefore, we will do it manually. To do this, select these two points and choose the coincidence constraint. Now all circles are fully defined, they have a fully defined position and dimensions. Linking the circle diameters with the equality constraint has the advantage that if I now want to change the diameter of all circles, I only need to change the diameter of one circle, and thanks to this, the remaining diameters are automatically changed. I will return to the value of 9 here. Ok, now based on this sketch, we create a hole in the solid, we close the sketch. Regarding creating holes based on a sketch, we have the pocket operation here. Select this operation, here we specify the pocket depth. In this case, I would like this hole to be a through hole, so we will use the through all type here. Now, regardless of the thickness of this solid, this hole will be a through hole. Click OK, and in this way we created something like this. Here, FreeCAD has another important advantage. FreeCAD is a parametric system. This means that we work on features and parameters here, and when creating a model, a history of this model is created. This has the advantage that now, if you want to make some changes to the model, you can edit a selected parameter, and you don't have to redraw the whole model from scratch. The model will simply adapt to the changes introduced. Now let's assume I would like to change the value of this fillet here. To do this, I just need to edit the operation that created these fillets. To edit an operation, right click and select the option to edit this operation. Now I will enter 20mm as the radius value. Ok, now, the next operation is hidden, but if we select this operation and press space, this operation will be visible. Notice that the position of these holes has changed. The position of these holes changed because the centers of the circles on which these holes were created were constrained to the center points of the fillets. Something like this is a really big advantage. Even when creating parts as a hobby, for example for 3D printing, situations sometimes occur where once we have printed such a part, we need to make slight changes, we need to slightly change a dimension. Thanks to the fact that we have FreeCAD here, which is a parametric system, we don't have to create the whole part from scratch, we only need to change the selected parameter and the model will be adapted to the introduced changes. Ok, we will now move on to creating the next holes. We will create counterbores for these holes and we will do it in a similar way. We will create a sketch on this face and create four circles whose center points will be constrained to the center points of the holes. Here we will start by creating reference geometry, select the create external geometry command and indicate the edges of the holes. Ok, so that we create reference geometry here so that we can use the center points. I right click to select drawing a circle, I place the center of the circle at the center point of the hole and for now I don't enter the diameter dimensions, I simply draw four arbitrary circles. Ok, I click the right mouse button to cancel this command. Now, if you create some geometry and don't enter a dimension while creating it, we can also do it at this stage. We have the dimensioning command here. 
This command is a general command and works by selecting a dimension for the indicated geometry. If you expand these commands, we have individual dimensions here, and we can choose a specific command for the dimension we want to define. We can also activate this by selecting the geometry and pressing the D key on the keyboard. Here we can enter the diameter of this circle, enter 15 millimeters here. As for the remaining diameters, we will use the equality constraint here. But notice that the dimensioning command is still active, so I click the right mouse button to cancel this command and simply select all circles with the left mouse button and select the equality constraint. The diameters of all circles are equal. We close the sketch and based on this sketch, we will create a hole in the solid using the pocket operation. Here, we will define the depth of this hole as 10 millimeters and click OK. In this way, we created another operation. This operation is in the operation tree, and if we needed to edit this operation, we could do so by editing selected parameters. Next, we will also remove material from the solid based on a sketch. We will create a sketch on this face, select this face, choose Create Sketch. Here we will draw two rectangles, but first let's create reference geometry. Select the Create External Geometry command and create reference geometry based on this edge and based on this edge. Click the right mouse button to cancel this command. Select drawing a rectangle, place the center of the rectangle at this point, and place the second point of the rectangle on this line. For now, simply click the left mouse button to constrain the vertex of the rectangle with the reference geometry. Now we will draw the second rectangle in a similar way. We place the center of the rectangle at the origin point of the coordinate system, and we place the second point of the rectangle on this line. I click the right mouse button to cancel the rectangle drawing command. Notice here that this corner of the rectangle has been constrained to this reference line. Here I can only change one dimension of the rectangle. Regarding the length of this side, the length of this side is defined and is linked to this solid. It looks similar in the case of this rectangle. Here too we can only change this dimension. Now we will add dimensions to these rectangles. First, click the left mouse button on this edge. Press the D key and enter 80 millimeters as the dimension value here. Next, the dimensioning command is active. Click on this line and enter 30 millimeters as the dimension value here and click enter. Okay, we have such a sketch. Now, based on such a sketch, we will remove material from the solid. If you have ever used FreeCAD, you might know that sketches in FreeCAD should not intersect. However, in newer versions of FreeCAD, this has been improved a bit. And based on such a sketch, we can perform a solid operation. I will close this sketch now and remove material based on this sketch in a moment. But now I select the pad operation. Notice that based on such a sketch, another fragment of the solid was created. Now I select the pocket operation. And based on this sketch, I can remove material from the solid. We will remove material from the solid to a depth of 15 millimeters. Enter 15 millimeters here and click OK to confirm it. OK, we already have such a solid, and now we will add chamfers to selected edges. With the control key, select these edges and choose the chamfer operation. Enter 10 millimeters as the chamfer dimension and click OK. Next, with the control key, we will select the next edges. However, to make selecting edges easier, we will switch to wireframe view. Now, with the control key, select these edges. OK, select the chamfer operation, and here enter 5 millimeters as the chamfer dimension and press Enter. Let's go back to the As Is view. Now we will add more chamfers. Regarding adding chamfers, we can also add these chamfers based on faces. Simply select the faces of the solid. We also do this with the Control key, and all edges of this face will be chamfered. Here, enter 1 millimeter as the chamfer dimension and click OK. In this way, we created such a solid. As I mentioned, FreeCAD is a parametric system. Now, for example, if I change the dimensions of the sketch on which we created the first operation, the changes I introduce here will be applied to the solid. As you can see, I don't have to build the whole model from scratch. I can change selected parameters, and the changes will be applied to the model.
Okay, we will end here. I know this part looks a bit different than what I showed you at the beginning, but these are issues related to dimensions which are not entirely important. The goal of this lesson, the goal of this example, was simply to show a few basic operations for creating 3D models in FreeCAD. Here, regarding issues related to dimensions, we can simply edit these dimensions, we can change the sketch dimensions, and we can adjust this part in some way so that it looks a bit different. As you can see, I introduced changes in the sketch and the changes were applied to the model. That is exactly the possibility FreeCAD gives us, to introduce changes even after creating the part. Simply, if we need to make some changes, we can change a selected parameter. We don't have to create the whole model from scratch. Thank you for watching, and I also encourage you to subscribe to this channel.